Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we're going to be going over how to maximize your profit in World of Warships. So we're going to go over how to stretch your dollar the furthest in game and how to ideally spend the least amount of money in game, which, well, to a lot of people would be zero dollars, which you can entirely do. I know players that haven't spent a penny on this game and they have done quite well and some of them have more tier 10s than I do or actually just more ships in general than I do as well but anyway we're gonna get into that in a second first off I would love very much like to thank you guys for three years of YouTube it was this week three years ago that I uploaded my first video to YouTube and boy if you go dig up that video I am um, I've come quite a long way not only as a player in World of Warships, which many of you guys have helped me become a better player, but also as a YouTuber in general. Um, yeah, if you go back and watch some of my older videos, it's it, it they're, they're pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. But um, many of you have been around since then. Um, some of you guys, I remember when you first commented on a video and when you joined the Discord and such. And it's been awesome, guys, and I just want to thank you guys so much for that. And I'm also doing a giveaway because of that. So what we're going to do is give away a Tier 9 Premium Ship. So to enter the contest, all you simply has, have to do is comment down below, tell me what server you, you are on, tell me your in-game username, and leave some type of witty comment. And make sure you are subscribed to the channel, because a bot will pick a comment at random, but whoever comments must be a subscriber to the channel. So just double check, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, and I will leave the comments open for entry until a week from today so a week from the 7th so you got until the 14th to enter this contest and then a bot will choose one of you guys as comments at random and i will message you in game or on discord if you're on discord or i will just reply to your comment in the comment section if maybe you aren't in the discord or you're on a different server so just make sure you get you guys leave a comment down below make sure you are subscribed and tell me your username and what server you are on to enter the contest and very much just like the last couple of contests if you don't want a tier 9 premium say you want a tier 7 premium well, I'll give you the Tier 7 Premium and the doubloon value difference between the cost of the Tier 7 and the Tier 9 Premium ship. Anyway, guys, make sure you go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and get on into the main part of the video. So, to stretch your dollar in World of Warships, again, like I mentioned at the start of the video, ideally you would want to spend either $0 or as least amount of money as possible on the game. Today we're going to talk you through how to do that exactly. So if you do want to spend money on the game, or I guess a better way to say it is if you are fine with spending money on the game, the best thing you can absolutely do for your income in the game is buying premium time. Now, premium time, the best bundle you can get for premium time is the year bundle. The year's worth of premium time. That is the best deal you can get. But... You can also get it within, let's see, what is it, October right now? you got a couple of months to wait until you can get the absolute best, best, best deal, which is when it goes on sale during Christmas and New Year's. Every year so far that I've been playing World of Warships around Christmas and New Year's for that update, premium time is 50% off. So you can get a year's worth of premium time half off. That's the best bang for your buck right there. And premium time gives you a 50% boost to every bit of your income across the board. Commander XP, normal XP, free XP, and credits. You get a 50% boost to all of that, and that is a huge, huge, huge boost in the game. And again, this is the best bang for your buck. Wait till the Christmas sale and grab some premium time. Now, premium time does also get given away quite often as part of rewards for uh, daily missions, campaigns, collections, and things like that. So make sure you're taking part in those events as well because you can get a fair amount of premium time. Um, I think the last, um, God, what was it? The last campaign I did, I got, I think, almost a week's worth of premium time out of it. So make sure you're doing those events. You can get some free premium time until you can swing through, swing by the premium shop around Christmas time and pick up a year's worth of premium time for a half off. 
The next tip, and this is of course directed more at newer players than you veteran players, but make sure you're using those special camos and signal flags that you get. Special camos get given away a whole lot um, for Lunar New Year's, for Christmas, for just about every holiday and all these uh, early access events for these lines coming out. They give away special camouflages. And these special camouflages, normally at minimum, they at least give you extremely similar boost as normal premium camouflages, so those camouflages you buy for the blooms for your ships, these special camouflages at normally, normally at least, give you that boot that boost. Some of them give you absolutely insane boosts, like Spring Sky, the uh, camo I use to grind to tier 10 in 22 battles. Some of them give you those levels of boost, and again with the Spring Sp Sky camouflage, they were giving that out like hotcakes around the Lunar New Year event. The stack of that camo that I had when I started that uh, 22 game, games to tier 10 video, I didn't buy those. I just got those just by playing the game around Lunar New Year. So again, just from playing the game, you can get a fair few of these special camouflages. Special signal flags as well. Make sure you're using those. Um, you do get the normal eco economical booster flags quite regularly in game for getting various achievements and stuff so again if you get those flags make sure you use them and then the special special signal flags the you know the the dragons and the orbos and all those those give you absolutely insane boost now those are a little rare to get you can get them in super containers or um like with the past anniversary event a lot of the containers and gifts that we were getting and and that event we're giving away those special uh signal flags so make sure you're using those if you get those they're not that hard to get but it's just a matter of playing the game and my biggest tip is of course do not buy these in game for credits or doubloons uh, credits credits are really the real grind in World of Warships so you don't want to be throwing them away on signal flags when you need to be saving up those credits to get to your next ship now if you for some reason have an overabundance of credits and you're fine with spending those credits on these signal flags and camouflage okay go for it but again just make sure you're not blowing all your credits on these signal flags and of course don't buy the containers or such to get these special signal flags because it will cost you quite a bit um i had to spend eighty dollars when i did the uh 22 games to tier 10 video to get enough special signal flags to get me there and i mean i got enough to do it but again it's 80 bucks and again the goal of this is to spend the least amount of money on the game as possible all right, next tip is when you are playing, go after those higher tier ships. If you didn't know, a booster is applied to your economical income when you damage ships that are of a higher tier than you. It's something around 0.25 for ships that are one tier higher, and then 0.5 for ships that are two tiers higher, and then 0.75 for three tiers above the ship that you're playing. Now, the only way to get the uh, three-tier boost is to fail div. That's where you div with a ship that's one tier higher than you, and then that ship gets uh, double up tiered, and now you've been tripled up tiered. So that one's not that ideal because that the power gap between that many tiers is normally quite bad. But double up tiering happens quite a lot in game. And yeah, it does suck to be the bottom tier in those matches, but it's, it's like a farmer's dream. Because if you have a ship that you are fairly decent in, and you get it double up tiered, and you know how to farm with that ship, you can get quite a bit of XP and credits out of that match for doing just a fraction of the damage that you would normally have to do if you were top tier. Because when you're top tier, you don't get any XP or... Uh, credit boost you don't so when you get double up tiered make the most of that situation and do try to farm those higher tier ships for damage now farming is normally something like you know you throttle juke which is playing with your throttle you know putting your stern toward the enemy ship going full reverse for a couple of seconds slamming it into maybe uh half ahead and then slamming it back into reverse just being unpredictable with your throttle acceleration that way it'll throw off the enemy team shots at you and then just um if your ship has good ap pinning the crap out of the the enemy ship or if your ship has good he burning the crap out of the enemy ship just to get that damage in because if you if you do that 
to a ship that's two tiers higher than you successively, you will get a lovely little profit out of that. If you want to see some examples of that, go to my um, 22 games to tier 10 video where I do just that uh, for 22 games and see the insane amount of uh, XP and credits I got doing that and, of course, stacking signal flags and special camels as well. Next tip is to go after destroyers. So apply what I just said with the XP boost for doing damage to higher tier ships to a high tier destroyer. So if you're in something like a light cruiser or a cruiser and there's a top tier destroyer, make sure you go after him. One, because sinking DDs is very, very, very helpful to your team. Two, because XP is rewarded based upon overall health percentage. So let's say um, there's a tier 9 DD. And if you just get one sub off on him and you wipe out half of his health, you get the same reward as if you did that damage to a grosser cur first. So, knowing that, make sure you go after those higher tier DDs. Because again, apply that at that um, economical boost to that situation, and that's a tidy profit just right there. And of course, if you wind up sinking him, you just sunk a ship that's two tiers higher than you, and you did most of the damage to him. That's a very, very, very good amount of XP and credits coming your way if you manage to pull that off. Which, again, if you're in a light cruiser or heavy cruiser, it's not that hard to take out DDs. Um, now, of course, the DD player won't make it easy for you if they're a good DD player. But, again, you will get rewarded appropriately. Next tip is Nelson. Get Nelson. Now, Nelson is available for 375,000 free XP. And... A new player, that does sound like a lot of XP, and it is, but it's not impossible to save up. It may take you probably the better part of four to five months to save up for that free XP, but Nelson is an absolute just amazing farmer. She's a tier 7 British BB with British BBHE and 16 inch guns at tier 7. So do the math there, 16 inch guns at tier 7, some of the biggest guns at tier 7, with British BBHE, with a super heal as well. So Nelson is a fantastic farmer, especially for credits, because tier seven gets up to a lot to tier nine now, and Nelson can still hang in the fight because of that super heal and with that British HE, and plus she still has 16 inch guns at tier nine, which again, that's about right for a tier nine ship, but this is a tier seven ship, and Nelson's a great ship. She performs very well. She's a premium ship, comes with a premium camouflage, and again, British BBHE, I cannot stress this enough. That is some of the best farming ammo in the game, from the Nelson, to the uh, Lion, to the Conqueror, to the Thunderer. God, it's easy to rack up just hundreds and hundreds of thousands of damage um, in a single match with the British BBHE. So go after Nelson, save up that free XP to get Nelson. Next tip. Make sure you cap those objectives. Now, I'm not saying suicide cap into every single cap that you see, but when the opportunity presents itself to safely cap, make sure you do that. One, because winning, of course, is much more profitable than losing. You get a much better XP boost when you win. Two, solo cap ribbons are some of the most valuable when it comes to XP and credit re uh, rewards. And, of course, helping your team out, winning is... Of course, very, very, very nice. And assist and capture ribbons are also very good as well. They're not as good as solo cap ribbons, but uh, they're still some of the most valuable ribbons you can get in the game. So make sure you're going after those caps. Be a good player. Support your team. Cap. Next tip, make sure you grind out a secondary line as you're grinding your main line. Again, this is one directed more at newer players, but, you know, sitting in battle, waiting for your main grind ship to come off cooldown, it, you know, you're kind of wasting time because while you're waiting for that ship to come back to port, you could be grinding a second line first off, so maximum grind there, but also when you're choosing a second line, maybe pick something you're not quite familiar with. Um, this is a mistake I made. I went straight battleships when I first started playing the game. Maybe if you're grinding a battleship line, pick a cruiser line. German heavy cruisers, uh, British light cruisers, American heavy cruisers. Just pick something maybe a little bit different than what you're used to. Get yourself out there. Get, become a more well-rounded player early on. That way, you know, you're not stuck being just a battleship main when, you know, maybe being 
a cruiser would be more flexible for your clan if you join a clan. That that's something I had to do when uh, when I joined my first clan. So make sure you grind more than one line. And of course, grinding two lines gives you twice the income too if you're using these hyper grind uh, tips. Next, avoid rushing into buying premium ships. Premium ships are very, very expensive. And again, the goal of this uh, video is to stretch your dollar as much as you can. So buying a premium ship, a tier 8 premium ship, costs around $40 to $50 nowadays. You could go buy Modern Warfare for that. So that's a video game in and of itself. So they are good ships for grinding because they do give you a nice boost to your income. You get the the um, normal boost from the premium camouflage, but they also have a premium ship boost on top of that. And if you're running um, premium time on top of that, yeah, that's a lot of stuff stacked on your ship. And then throw maybe some special signal flags on top of that, and oh my god, yeah, absolutely, you can have an insane amount of credit and XP income. But again, think about the price. 40 bucks for a tier 8 premium ship, and of course, lower tier premium ships cost less, but still. Ships can get power crept even premium ships look at atlanta for example the thing was an absolute monster two years ago and nowadays it's just a shadow of its formal self and people paid real money for that ship and yeah it's kind of stuck like that and we're gonna said that they don't buff um premium ships so it's kind of stuck like that now they have broken that rule several times before so it wouldn't surprise me if they are willing to do it again in certain situations but just keep that in mind so just avoid buying those premium ships until you've had a bit more time with the game and maybe if you're happy with the game and you're enjoying it then maybe consider buying a premium ship speaking of premium ships coal ships coal ships are great they are free premium ships so for those of you that don't know coal ships are ships in the army that you can exchange coal for you get coal by logging in every day and um, playing daily missions, objectives, um, directives for certain events and campaigns. You can also get them in your daily containers. You get three daily containers a day, each for a different amount of XP earned throughout the day. So when you're picking these, uh, these three containers, make sure you're picking that coal container for every single one. That's, that's the way you get your maximum amount of coal for those containers and then again go grind out the daily missions and objectives to get your coal. And once you get enough coal, Make sure you get the Thunderer first. That ship is, um, uh, I, I gotta choose my words carefully here. That ship is uniquely rather quite strong for its position in the game. Yeah, get that thing first, and then from there, I would recommend maybe something like the Georgia or the Palmer. But again, get Thunderer first. Great ship for farming damage and for bringing plenty of credits your way. It's a tier 10 premium British battleship. Uh, with again, amazing British BBHE, amazing AP, good maneuverability, decent AA, and insane um, concealment. So it's a very good ship, get that one first, and then after that it's your personal choice. Last but not least, play with friends on comms. What of Warships actually has voice chat, if you guys didn't know. I don't think anybody uses it, so that's one way you and your friends can communicate. Or you can have something like Discord or TeamSpeak. And playing with friends on voice comms greatly increases your chances of winning. You can coordinate and plan. You can um, even maybe communicate with your team through chatting, saying, hey, me and my uh, division are doing this. Would you guys like to help us out with this or that? So anytime you do that and you plan and coordinate, you immediately more than likely have a leg up on the enemy team because there's a pretty darn good chance that no one on the other team's communicating tactically at least. I'm sure some of them are spamming some of the hotkeys, but anytime you coordinate and plan, you have a much better chance of winning. Also, it just makes the game more enjoyable. This game can be incredibly frustrating at times, and having someone to share in your frustration and um, just talk it out with can help greatly. So, if you got some friends, make sure to you bring them in game with you. If you don't have any friends, join a clan, find a clan. There are plenty of clans that are looking for players. Um, we have one as well, TSOF. We're down to T4 already with all the people that are that we have joining. So if you would like to join our clan, there's a link in the description down below and a link to the Discord down below as well. There's plenty of people there that are looking for divisions as well if you just want to find some people to play with. 
Anyway guys, those are my tips for stretching your dollar the most in this game. And of course, you could not spend a dollar at all and just follow some of these tips and do fairly well for yourself in game. But if you are planning on spending a little bit of money, make sure to follow a couple of these tips and you should be rolling in the credits in no time. If you have any other tips that maybe I forgot or um, just don't know about, leave them in the description down below, help help some other players out. Uh, make sure, again, to enter the giveaway contest by entering your server, your in-game username, and a little witty comment. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to enter the contest. Um, other than that, guys, again, thank you guys for three years of YouTube. I'm very, very happy that the channel has done this well in that period of time. It's looking like we may even end 2020 with 20,000 subscribers, which would be absolutely amazing. Anyway, guys, hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday, and I hope to catch you guys in the next one.